Good morning, Calvary, and welcome to your word for the day. My name is Pastor Mitch, and today our verses are Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. And this passage tells us about the part, uh, the period between Jesus washing the disciples' feet at the Last Supper and his eventual arrest and crucifixion. And you can read the whole story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew chapter 26. But today I want to focus in on a few of the verses because they reveal a part about Jesus that we don't normally think about when we think of our Savior. So as you follow along in your Bibles, the four verses we'll be reading are verses 38 through 41. Now before we get there, I want to remind you of a few things. Uh, first is that Jesus is the a second member of the Trinity. You know, our God exists in a Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is God the Son. And even while he was here on earth, he never lost his divinity. So Jesus is fully God. But Jesus is also fully human like you and me. He experienced pain, both physical and emotional, in the same way that we do. And he experienced temptation just like we do. And the thing that sets Jesus apart, though, is that, or the thing that makes Easter a day to celebrate, is the fact that Jesus experienced life like we do, but he did not sin. He never sinned so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. So Jesus and his disciples, they, they leave the upper room where they ate the Last Supper, except for Judas, who left to go finish his betrayal of Jesus. And then Jesus had them come up with him to the Garden of, of Gethsemane so that he could pray because he knew what, he was, what was about to happen to him and uh, with him concerning his arrest and execution. So first off, have you ever had just a bad day? Have you ever felt as if there is no one on your side, that you are left to battle the hardships of life all alone? Have you ever felt that no one understands the weight that is on your shoulders? You know, maybe the bills, they just keep coming, and the money coming in never seems to be as much as the money that's going out. Or your business is struggling. You're not sure if you will have to let some of your employees go. Or right now, you're not sure if you can even find the employees that you need to run your business. Or maybe your kids are going through a tough time, a tough time at school or at home, and you're not sure what to do or how to parent them. Or maybe you're a single parent who's just trying to get it all done by yourself. See, I'm guessing we've all had moments when we've felt alone and misunderstood, like we're the only people alive who've ever experienced the specific kind of hurt or stress or frustration or sadness that we are feeling. So back to Jesus. He knows what is about to happen to him. And while preparing himself to be the sacrificial lamb for our sins, he is, he is experiencing a ton of stress and possibly anxiety and fear. So Jesus pulls aside some of his disciples, and in verse 38, it reads this. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, Jesus knows what it's like to feel overwhelmed. He understands both the emotional and the physical pain that we feel, but that's what's so powerful about the Easter story. As we get closer to Easter weekend, I know Easter is usually about the, the egg hunts and the peeps and the cute animals, but before Easter, before the resurrection and the victory over death uh, came, uh, it came the part where Jesus, he suffered and he died all for you and for me. So Easter is a reminder that we don't follow a God who can't understand us. We follow a Savior who is right there with us even when we're hurting because Jesus understands our pain. Hebrews 4.15 tells us that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. So as you prepare to celebrate Easter this weekend, do it with the knowledge that you have a Savior who understands your situation. He understands your pain and hurt, and he sympathizes with you, and he wants you to know that even when your life feels like it's a mess, you are understood and loved. Thank you for tuning in to your word for the day. Like and share this video, and we will see you tomorrow.